Windows 11 24H2 update is probably the biggest update in the history of Windows 11. I've got it right over here on my desktop, Windows 11 Pro 24H2. I'm going to share with you how you can get it as well if you want it today, really easy. But I will share with you some of the new features that we will find on 24H2, but those to me feel insignificant when we think of the core change, which is the ability to have just next month the implementation on the new laptops that will come out with the new CPU Snapdragon X Elite, which is a awesome CPU and it's meant to target and fight with the M chip family from Apple, M1, M2, M3, M4 and the variants. So I'm really hopeful that we will have through this path a nice fight with these two major operating systems and for that on the ARM technology. Now, I do imagine that this is not an easy task to accomplish accomplish compared to what I'm about to share with you, which is mostly cosmetic. But at the end of the day, it's great to see implemented on Windows and I want to share with you. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons, don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price. And with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description, it will get even cheaper. And besides Windows 11 Pro, if you are looking for Windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our Microsoft account, you can use the same coupon code, which will give you the best price possible at this moment. So just in case, the link will be down below. So here on the screen, Windows 11 Pro 24H2. And I was just remember something that I'm not really sure if it's going to happen or not with this new update. And we will be able to use it on ARM computers, namely the new Snapdragon X Elite. But I'm not really sure if all the apps that we use on Windows right now with the x86 platform, which is Intel and i AMD CPUs if the apps will be compatible. So this is something that I'm not really sure. There will be also the end to support apps on 32 bit, at least on the ARM side of things. I'm not really sure on the x86 as well. Nonetheless, let's take a look at the screen and see, first of all, how you can get 24H2. Now, if you are with a normal installation of Windows 11, you are fine, but you will not have as many updates and you will not have access yet to the 24H2. So one of the things that we have in con is this. I will have a lot of updates, but if you want, you can just go to the Windows inside the program and press it right over here. And in my case, I've got the... Uh, uh, turn on optional diagnostic off because I'm already inside the preview and probably I did change. But if you turn it on, you will have the option to get in the Windows Insider program and you will have all the updates at any time, which is awesome. So you will have everything, but at the same time, you will have so many updates that sometimes we lose track of the new features. That being said, and talking about features, let's take a look at the Explorer. Now, this is really a cool one. If I press the right button, I now have the <laughs> ledge right over here, the subtitles, cut, copy, rename, share. And this is one of the things that I'm using Windows 11 since it was released, but I'm still not used to the icons and they are not difficult. Have that in mind. They are well thought, well designed, but they are not difficult. Especially here, I, I always confuse the copy and paste and it's clear that this one is the paste but i don't know and, and with this this really helps a lot i do believe that this should have been implemented since the beginning but it's better now than never so thank you and this is it it's a cosmetic change so when i said before this will look or feel insignificant compared with the major changes that the operating system is having but they are very welcome. Also, if I want to zip this document or this file, I just right click, compress to, and right now, look at the options that we have. Zip file, 7-zip, tar file. So if I want the 7-zip, I just press it. No worries whatsoever, here it is. Just need to name this channel. Okay, I need to have my keyboard connected to the computer first. Name this 
channel there we go we just created in an easy way a 7-zip file so if i go here we also have additional options and right now i can select the uh, archive format so right over here and then i can select the compression method and i can select if i want it faster smaller and so on and so forth and press create Basically, this is it so easy. This is really, really great. Although it looks insignificant, it's great. Now, for those of you that are using the command prompt, which is something that we uh, use occasionally here, I remember that one of the last videos talking about the Windows Scope pilot option not being available on all the regions in the world we had to access the command prompt with administration privileges so i need to right click and select run as administrator or i need to click on run as administrator but if i click just a normal click i've got a command prompt and if i'm writing something for example uh, leave this directory okay i don't need administration rights but if i need to implement something with administration rights which we did on that particular tutorial i can just write something but i will write this that is something similar to you so this is super user if i press it right now it will tell me hey this is not enabled on this machine to enable it go to developer settings and it will also give me a link so i press Control and click and it will open for developers i can go with the menu and settings and so on but this is really cool so i can just enable sudo right over here and yes if there was a black screen it's just because my capture card does not capture the prompt but it's yes that is it and if i press right over here configure how sudo runs applications i would select in line because in line means that everything that we write right over here and the log and the errors will appear here and if we select as it is by default window it will open a new window with that command prompt and it will do whatever it does and it will close and we will lose track if it went fine if it had any error or so on so if i press right now sudo uh, here we go we have sudo enabled so this is just awesome so if i want to do something i just select sudo and then i go to my command line and i know that i'm giving permission at a administration level that will allow me to do that command line which is awesome so for those that usually use command prompt this is really handy let's close this and let's go to settings okay i close the window let's go to system let's go to there we go power and right over here as you can see we have a new option now this is something that we could achieve if we go to the control panel settings and dive deep we would have this option but now it's a lot more friendly so if we want we can change pressing the power button will make my computer do nothing sleep I it. I love the do nothing. Press the button and do nothing. That is a great one. And we also have the pressing sleep button. Now this is probably more targeted at laptops, but we have also the option for desktops right over here, which is something that we also have. This one right over here was this one here. Energy saver was something that only appeared on laptops, devices that have a plug-in and a battery. And right now we also have on desktop so i can select on and off and as you can see it was is changing right over here on the task bar and we also have an option to go to the task bar actually we can go right now so one of the changes that we also have is if i press here left click we used to have six um, icons right over here i'm not really sure if i can call them icons windows but now we have pages and this is really, really handy. One of the things that we can do is enable energy saver right over here. And if I want, I can change the order that I have these um, buttons right over here. So if I don't want to have the energy saver here, I don't. Uh, or if I believe that this is more priority for me, then we can change. And this is great because we will have pages. One of the things that we can also have, as you can see, I don't have Wi-Fi on this computer, but I do have a Wi-Fi USB. So if I connect it, China, it appears the Wi-Fi. So we had a few and now we have one more so we will be able to have a few here and customize if this is priority or not talking about wi-fi there's also a very welcome change right over here um, as you can see we have the refresh button this was non-existent if you are using a 
previous than 24H2, try it out. You will not have this button. Uh, so we had to close this up and then go here and select Wi-Fi and refresh. For someone that is troubleshooting something on the Wi-Fi, this is great. I don't need to no longer go here and here and Wi-Fi and then duh. No, I can just press the refresh as easy as this. This is really awesome. And one more uh, related to network as well. If I right click right over here, I will have a diagnose network problem tool, which looks different. Now, to be honest, I still haven't tried. So I'm not really sure if it's going to work better, worse, or the same as the diagnose tool works right now. But for what I've seen, it seems that it's going on the right way, probably with a bit of help on AI side, but hopefully will help us to diagnose and solve issues, which in the past, it didn't. It was just something that was there for those that are desperate to hang on to something that will not save, will not solve the issue. And right here, my hope is, Okay, this is the way to go. I'm not sure if it is, but it looks like it could be. And if this works well in this area, hopefully it will work well on other areas of the operating system. And hopefully it will help us to solve issues with a few clicks of a button without having to dig anywhere and without having to come to YouTube to find all the solutions. Of course, some of us will lose the jobs, but that's the way life goes. That being said, hope that the video was helpful in some way. Hope that you are as excited as I am, not only with this great update 24H2, but also and probably mainly to know the new laptop generation with the new CPU generation, Snapdragon X Elite, and what will come after that that will give us great computers with a great operating system that we already have and that we have seen that it's coming by major changes to be at its best if the video was helpful don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen my name is roberto george and as always i'll see you on the next one